Good morning, good afternoon, or good midnight. My name is Tyrell Thomas. I am from Rosa River First Nation. Um, you know, I started music when I was 15, so 2009. And I remember uh, when I first started music, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to write about like gangster stuff, you know. You know, I wanted to be a gang member, talking about money, talking about girls in disrespectful ways. And, you know, that's that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be somebody famous. But, you know, there's we always have times in our in our own story that, you know, affects everything that we do. I remember uh, I think I was in grade nine at the time. I was at home and and I flipped on the TV. It was just me and my grandma home. And I turned to much music, and on the TV was this artist named Classified. They did this spotlight where they just, you know, promote one artist for one episode. And his music was on, and I heard his music. It was like, you know, he was talking about, like, real-life stuff. And he wasn't talking, you no know, gangster stuff or nothing like that. And I was like, what? You know, rappers actually do this, man. And when I, when I heard that, I was like, okay, I want to do something like that one day. You know, I... Ever since then, I started writing music to, you know, to inspire people and, you know, to bring the best out of us, even the best out of myself, because without music, I know for sure that I, you know, I I still think that music really saved me because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for music. You know, a lot of things happened. Uh, you know, for example, like growing up was hard for me. Uh, my mom, you know, she left me on my grandma's couch when I was two weeks old. And my dad, he wasn't in my life. He was an alcoholic. You know, I must have been laying on this couch for about two or three hours before anybody found me. And when they did, they read this note, and this note said that, that she couldn't take care of me. And that my mom, she said she was leaving. You know, so she left, and I remember my grandma told me this story, and I, I felt like I never belonged because I was just abandoned on this couch. You know, nobody wanted me. You know, it, it's, as times passed, I remember uh, I was eight years old. And my grandma knocks on the door, and I'm in my room with, you know, playing with my toys, and she opens the door. And she peeks over, and she's like, Tyrell, your dad's here. And I'm thinking, my dad is here. My dad is here. What? Wait, my dad is here. My dad is here. You know, I'm so excited. I'm happy. I'm like, we're going to be a family again. And, you know, things are going to come together. I was so happy. It brings me down the hallway. She opens the back door, and it's so bright. And, you know, the, the, the sun is so bright. And finally, I seen him. He's my dad. You know, he didn't even say hi to me at the time. The first thing he said is, where's your mom? You know, so I took him to where my mom was, and she was at this trailer at my auntie's house playing cards. And uh, on our walk there, I remember I was trying to get my dad's attention. I'd run in front of him and wave at him and try to say hi, try to get him to notice me. But he didn't look at me. You know, we got to this trailer, and we're walking up the steps to the door, and he tells me to wait. So here I am looking at the door. You know, he walks inside. A couple minutes later, you start hearing this arguing. You know, it's getting louder and louder, and, and you knew that my dad was mad because of his footsteps. You know, he, he came to the door, and he kicked it open. And he walked past me like I didn't exist. You see, but this is, this is my dad, and some part of me loved him. So I followed him down this road. As he's walking, he's, no, he notices me following him, and he, and he stopped and he looked back. And he said, you can't come where I'm going. He turned and walked. We got to the middle of the road, he did the same thing. But the third time, we, you know, we got to the end of the road, and this time he looked at his eight-year-old son. And he said, Tyrell, I'm never coming back. You know, he said this to me when I was eight years old, and and I remember I didn't know what I was feeling in my heart. and it, it burned. And I felt like I was broken. And I remember I stood there and I couldn't move, but I, I could see him walking away. And then I watched him until I couldn't see him anymore. After this, I went to my grandma's house. And I remember I was crying and crying and, you know, nobody came to check up on me. So again, I felt like, like I wasn't wanted, that nobody loved me. You know, years passed, I, I was looking for love because I never got at home. So I started looking for love in other places, gangs. You know, I got into the life of crime. I remember there was this one time years later, 
around the same time I started making music. I robbed this guy. He was a rich man. His name was Kurt. And I remember I, I was in his house, and I went to this dresser, and I pulled the top drawer, and inside of it there was cards. So I cut these cards open. Inside them there's fifty dollar bills and there was hundred dollar bills. You know, I took it all and I and I got my guys together, the guys who helped me rob it, and we left out the backyard, but one of the neighbors saw us. Later that night, we ended up at a place called the Sunflower Festival, where there was rides, food, a place we could spend all the money that we just stole. But it's 11 p.m. and all the, the, the lights and the stores, they all closed down. And me and my cousin are walking out of the park side by side, joking and laughing, looking on the ground. And we both look up and under the street, like, it's Kurt, the man that we just robbed. And he comes up to, you know, he walks towards us, he comes up to us and he, he said, can I talk to you? So I said, yeah, we went to the side and he asked me, do you know who broke into my house? And I said, no. You see, he stopped and he took a deep breath and he looked back at me and he asked me again, do you know who broke into my house? And I said, no. See, but the second time I said no, I, I felt something in my heart that I've never felt before. I lied to another man. You know, he said, uh, if you hear anything about tomorrow afternoon, let me know. If not, I'm calling the cops and I'll find out who did it. He got up and he walked away. I remember I went to my grandma's house that night and, and I couldn't sleep. I was thinking so much. All I, know, all I remember and all I was thinking was, this is my last charge and I'm going to jail. Who's going to be there for my, my brother and sister that I had to help raise because my mom and dad weren't there? You know, all these thoughts hit me and I was hurt. So 11 a.m. the next morning comes. And I'm finally brave enough to call him, so I pick up the phone and, you know, I dial his number and it rings. And he picks up. And then I said, Kurt, I broke in your house. I'm sorry it won't happen again. And I'm ready to go to jail. You know, I was quiet for a bit and he replied. He said, I'm not going to call the cops on you. I want you to pay me back and help my family build a shed. So right away I said yes, and, you know, we both said goodbye, hung up the phone. I was so confused because this never happened to me before. The next day I was walking to his house and I was scared because I thought he was going to beat me up or, or yell at me because I robbed him. You know, but when I got there, we're working on the shed. Kurt is right next to me, and his kids are in the yard, and one's in a, in a sandbox, and, you know, they're playing around, and his wife is in the garden. It's crazy because the man that I just robbed showed me something I've never seen before or never felt, and that's forgiveness and love. It brought me to a place where I want people all over, every show, every speaking event, to know that our love and forgiveness can change somebody's life and that your story matters and remember to use it. And that's why, you know, that's why I do music is I use it to to change people, to help people, to inspire people. Even, you know, people even inspire me all the time. It's the craziest thing. I don't want to make music about, like, gang member stuff anymore, man. You know, I want to do something that matters. And what matters most is your story. So thank you for listening. Hopefully this inspires you in some way.